Yo! Are we starting? And what up, though? Back out of the it. morning. Oh, we back, man. It's been a minute. It's been, been a good time. Ooh, man. A fantastic time. Uh, hiatus. Some people yeah. say yeah. hiatus for show. Sure. Summer Ooh, off. Man. Oh, we gotta we gotta start. How, how we living, Ooh. bro? Ooh, I'll start us off. Start yeah. us off. Eleven out of ten. I think the kids call it an improper fraction. <laughs> um, just doing fantastic, man. Um, definitely some uh, struggles, but more focusing up on the positives. So feeling closer to him, God, now than they ever have. So. Yeah, that's great, bro. Valid. 11 out of 10. You're 11 out of 10? I think I'm going to go 9.5 out of 10. Okay, sure. Uh, nah, man, God has been really good. He's been really faithful in my life. I've been able to see some fruit in that. Um, there's some good things coming, uh, some good things that I've experienced mm. previously. Um, so I'm just looking forward to continuing to serve God and glorifying Him, man. So no complaints over here, man. It's good. I'm a 10 out of 10, bro. Yeah. Mm. Uh, very restful weekend, good week, school, basketball, all that. So. Life is good, God is good, man. Can't complain, dog. Well, happy to hear. Twenty nine point five out of ten. I, I can't do it. That's close, <laughs> close to an A, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, Sweet. man. So yeah, I just want to ask you guys a question, more about like what is like building your life on the right foundation look like to you guys? Mm-hmm. Building the right foundation. Uh, I think one first, you just acknowledge that our lives do contain some sort of foundation. You know, whether. What what you look like, what that looks like for us is up to you. But um, for me, uh, I've tried to grow my foundation on Christ um, just for the past, what, roughly three years or so. Uh, I've seen some fruit in that. You know, I haven't always been the great greatest in it, but I've seen God do some tremendous things in me just giving him that foundation that he desires, man. And uh, it's hard because it was a struggle at first because my previous foundation was built off of what lust or greed or like chasing acceptance and that was really a shaky foundation and got me nowhere it was always like crumbling and so now i find myself in a position where there's a lot more stability and security and knowing that christ is my foundation the rock and i think that's the driving force of my life so no i think that's huge i think that's a spot on too because i think for me i think the foundation everything is built off of that and so for me, for the first 18 years or so, I was building the foundation up on me. And so everything that was coming off of that was me, me, me. Everything was centered on me. Everything was all about me. And so now after I've changed, now I build my foundation on Christ. And it's a fascinating thing because now everything that happens up in life is built off of that. So the way I treat people, instead of basing it off of me, which is how do I feel? How are you treating me? It's based off of Christ. Okay, if God loves you, I can too. And so having that trans, having that, Transformation now has trans has transformed everything <laughs> up in life too. Because again, it changes the words I say, the actions that I do, and the people that I treat. And so that foundation is key. Because again, everything is built off of that. Yeah, I'm cook. No, for real, that's good. I think uh, I think for me, kind of similar to what Slater was saying, is just like, um, and previously I was building that foundation on me, 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 mm-hmm. and now I'm trying to focus on building it on Christ. And so I think. You know, we can build, we can have the foundation. It can be rocky or it can be shaky. And then we also have this other like expensive material. But if it's not on the right foundation, it's not going to stand, you know? So it's like when I was building my foundation, when my foundation was built on like me, 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 like and adversity came, it was always coming crashing down. Everything was just falling apart. And I didn't know how to handle that adversity. When I built it on Christ and not myself, then I add these things that Christ is teaching me on top of that foundation. Like I can withstand through adversity, you know? So it kind of reminds me of just Matthew 7, just like, you know, when that adversity comes, when the rain comes, when the winds blow and you have Jesus as the foundation built on the rock, like you can handle that adversity, you can handle the storms that come. And I think like the difference between the two is building on the uh, foundation of sand and building on the foundation of a rock is the perspective change, you know? Because when you build it on the rock, it's like, okay, like, I can like I'm going through I'm going through stuff. There's a storm right now, but I'm built on Jesus. So you know what I'm saying? I'm good. Things are things adversity is coming, but I'm solid, you know, I'm not gonna crash. But when it's like the sin is me, it's like dang adversity's coming now, I'm just like crashing out, you know? So it's just like it's that perspective change too when you build your foundation on Jesus. I think it's good because as we examine like the foundation of not only our lives, but the lives that we can see uh, broadcasted out into the entire world, I think one thing we should recognize is what goes into like building the foundation. I think we've talked about this before, but counting the costs. And I think every good builder counts the cost and what, what they're going to build on, what foundation or what piece of land that they're going to build on. Especially if it's like 
let's for instance, like you're building a, a property or something, like you're you're examining the entire area around it, making sure the land is good, it's fertile for soil, and it's actually sturdy so that the house can stand, and so that when storms do come or uh, inclement weather arises, mm -hmm. man, then it, the house can remain sturdy despite what it faces. And I think likewise for us as believers in Christ, when we identify like the cost of what a foundation without Christ looks like, it can be sort of like we can end up empty and wondering why our house wasn't able to stand or withstand like the, the storms that income. But when you look at the foundation and building it on the rock that is Christ, no matter what storms come in your life, it doesn't matter because like Christ is that rock that stands on it. And I heard this beautiful quote this summer. Um, there's a woman who said that not every not every storm you go through, like like you you're going to go through storms. Right. But God doesn't like promise that you won't be wet. Mm -hmm. And so that's just, it's such a beautiful thing because like, you're going to go through storms and you're going to experience the turmoil and the, 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 the wetness and like the gusts of wind, which might be scary. But, you know, through it all, you can be secure knowing that Christ is the foundation that he's there to protect you. This is why Jesus was sleeping in the boat, because no matter what was actually surfacing around him, he was good because he knew what the foundation was and he was the foundation. And that's what he was trying to convey to the disciples. So that's what I'm trying to build my life on. And I'm counting the cost. Like, what is what have I built up in my life and what has like the, the return on investment looked like for me in the past? And then what is the return on investment looking like now, now that Christ is my foundation? Yeah. Think of this experience of counting the cost because you're counting the cost of the entire thing, yeah. right? No, no one just counts for the cost of a foundation. So you're trying to build a house, a building or that. And so to have, if you're trying to build a big building, then you've got to have an even stronger foundation. So I also think it's key to, um, to think, what kind of building am I trying to build? And then what foundation do I need to make that building happen? Because if I'm developing a house, a, a small house, I assume I don't need a big, huge thing. But if I'm trying to build a, a mansion, I assume I'm gonna need a, a real strong, uh, firm, the foundation and so I think it's key that we also see what am I trying to build what is the big picture and then how do I start building that in that picture what, what what paint do I need you know what I'm saying yeah mm -hmm. man I think uh what's what's interesting about like the foundation is like if you hang around somebody long enough or you hear somebody talk enough about themselves you can know what foundation they're building their life on and I think even for Christians too is like we may be the only Bible some people may ever read so make sure that Bible is filled with Jesus and not filled with yourself, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's so important that we're, we're building our foundation on Christ, not only just for the public eye, but just actually to have a relationship with Jesus for salvation, but also so, so that other people can see like, hey, like, okay, this is what a, a life of freedom, a life of grace and a life of salvation looks like when my foundation is built on Jesus, you know? So I think it's so important that we, if we call ourselves Christians that we're portraying that foundation the correct way. This is so good. I mean, now that I think about it, in order for us to get this foundation, I think we all must recognize that someone had to show us the foundation, right? You don't mm -hmm. just come out the womb and understanding how to build a foundation of anything, right? Yeah. Someone shows you the ropes and the way, and I think that's why a community is important because I can't build this foundation of Christ by myself. In fact, I'll be swayed in my, my, my own fleshy desires and it'll just compromise itself right then and there. So I think it's important to have, like for me, like brothers in Christ, who strengthened me, who challenged me, who equipped me, and also inspired me by their lifestyles to help me build my own foundation on the rock of Christ. And so my encouragement to you all is just like identify like who you're surrounded with, what are they doing, and what are the foundations that they're building? Because I think that directly influences the way that you might build your foundation. Because on, on one end, you can have people that you've been growing up with your entire life and you've been living at them, but the foundation for them is not necessarily secure because they've built it on that sand. Whereas mm -hmm. other people, they might not have the most glamorized, glamorizing foundation, but that foundation is sturdy because they built it on Christ. Mm -hmm. So I think if you take inventory in our lives and look at who's around us and the fruit of what their foundation looks like, I think it can put us in a direction where we can actually bear fruit after we analyze that. Yeah, I love what you talked about, like just like your friends. I think like even like your relationship with your friends, like what is the foundation of that friendship? Like what is the mm -hmm. foundation of that relationship, you know? And I think like a lot of friends that I've lost, it's like it's been those been the foundations that have been built on sand, that's been built on just sharing a dopamine high, you know, yeah. compared to where like now the friends I have, we're building on Jesus and that stuff is immovable. No matter what adversity we go through, it's like we can still bring it back to Jesus, you know, but compared to like those past relationships that I had that was built on the sand, those was gone, bro. That's <laughs> done, away, done away with. So it's like it's so important for us to make sure like we're choosing our friends wisely and that we're like building our foundation on Jesus. And like 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, bad company corrupts good character. And it's like before that says, do not be deceived, you know? And I think like, 
I was deceived building those friendships on that sand, you know? So that's why it says like, do not be deceived, bad company corrupts good morals or bad company corrupts good character. So that's why it's so, so important to build your foundation on Jesus, especially with friendships. I'm huge on who you hanging around. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm huge on, cause in this thought process here, and some people only see sand. Like if you're built on sand, you're built on sand. It's told everybody that I know is built on sand. How would I know to build it on, or on something firmer? Because mm-hmm. everybody I know, everybody ar- around me has sand. And so it's like, right. well, then I'm actually dumb because that's all I know. But if you're, if, you're, if you're shown something firmer, well, now you have an opportunity. It's like, no, that sand's wrong because I've actually been shown this. And you only know that something's false as soon as someone's been shown the truth. Mm-hmm. But if you've only known false and all your friends only know false, then how do you know the untruth? But as you're shown the untruth, it's like, oh, I've got two options here. Mm-hmm. And I say, always pick the truth. Yeah, hey, I want to hit that point because, again, some people inherently don't think sand is bad, right? Mm-hmm. You think about the beaches. Everybody wants to be on the sand because it's right next to the water. But when you realize if you surround yourself by just a bunch of beaches or people that are on the beaches, you can be easily deceived because of the beautiful aesthetic, but mm. that everything that glitters is gold. And we know that mm. to be true, man. So I think when you can take back and actually step away from the shore and look at the entire surroundings, when you face away from the sand, you're able to see much more to the entire world. And that would be my challenge to like just people in general. And I have to take that challenge myself because sometimes I get so consumed with just the pleasures of sand and what that beach can provide for me that I forget about what the trees in the background or the oxygen around me, or maybe even just like the landscape of just streets and stuff that how that can actually influence my life in a better direction. But I think one, we just like looking at what the sand is or, or who the people on the sand that you're hanging around and what they're trying to continue to do. Cause it, if it's continue to talk about beaches, man, I mean, there's some good opportunities to have on the beach, and there are also some <laughs> questionable things that you're going to do on the beaches with people, man. No doubt. So I'm, I, I would say analyze, hey, who are you going to the beach with, bro? Because <laughs> some things, you might be riding some waves, bro. And other things, you might be going in a direction where you might not want to be going now. So I just, again, I want to harp on taking the inventory of who's around you, what you're building. Because, I mean, we even look at Jesus. One of his greatest characteristics that we rarely talk about is that Jesus was a carpenter. And so if Jesus is a carpenter, that means he was always building something for the first 30 years in his life, right? And so if Jesus is a carpenter and he builds things, then as children, a part of the same family that God is, don't you expect that we're going to be building things in our lives? So if we're building something, we got to count the cost of what's being built and then who's helping us build the things that we're building. So Yeah, bro. I love that you hit on like, some people don't see that sand is actually bad. And I think like you can look at most of the people in the world, people don't think the things that they're doing are bad, mm. you know? So a lot of people are taking, are taking quote unquote wins, but are actually losses in God's eyes. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's so important when you actually like, you, you, when you find that rocky foundation, bro, and you actually like have a foundation that's built on Jesus and you have the Holy Spirit with you, the Holy Spirit is able to tell you like, hey, like, Hey, this is not the foundation that you need to be building on. This is not the people that you need to be building on. And I think like we always have a choice to make and we also have the consequences of that choice. So if it's like, if I want to build my foundation on sand, then I got to deal with the consequences of building on that sand, which it could possibly fall down and just be tarnished. But it's like, when I build my foundation on the rock, it's like, okay, adversity is still going to come, but it's actually going to withstand, you know? So that's why it's so important that we just like, Make, make sure we know the difference between the two because I think, like you said, a lot of people don't know what they're doing is wrong, but it's just like, hey, that's some people's only walk of life, you know? Yeah. I was raised in church and this an expression that I was always told was to be like Jesus. And so it's like, okay, how do you do him that? I think, and, and I was processing your thoughts here. Jesus, although he was a carpenter and he was building that, like actually building things, he was also building a light. He was building something that was going out, going to outlast him. And I think that we all can be like Jesus and can build a light, can build something that can outlast us. And so if we're trying to be like Jesus, then we have to build a life and look at how he, how he treated people and how he acted the you know, stuff that, that, that he said. And so I think that we can all be like Jesus by creating something, not just in our hands, but how we act and yeah. who we are. This is good. And also, because I don't want to come to the point where as we sound like we have it all figured out. Right, right. I mean, I'm sure all of us we're close. still trying yeah, to build. I mean, close. I'm still organizing the planks, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, I struggle every single day, man. So this is why I need, you know, guys like you guys. And also, I think it also takes humility to recognize that you need to build something different. After a certain point in time, I can have so much pride to think that what I'm building is good, but actually in the eyes of others, it's like, Dude, I can see that that's gonna fall in about two minutes right now. Right. Maybe you can't see because of the pride that you mm-hmm. have, but the eyes that you guys have can help me, you know, point out 
like the blind spots that I might be blind to. Yep. It's important, like as we're navigating life, you know, to have the humility to receive constructive consider criticism, have the humility to receive feedback from people because at the end of the day, feedback from people who have the best interest in you. Some people just like to give unsolicited advice. <laughs> Others can actually want to give you good advice that can help you grow as an individual. So I think it's important, like identifying, okay, Here's my place, here's my role. I don't know everything, I'm not always right. Let me go check up with Josh, let me go check up with Mike and see what they think. If they think that these thoughts are actually dangerous for me, I'm going to listen to them because I know at the end of the day they have the best interest for me. But if I'm continuing trying to build on my own, eventually I'm gonna hit a hammer and a nail, it's gonna be stuck in my hand and I'm gonna be mad because I didn't listen to you guys when I should have in the first place. Yeah, and you guys know the scripture where Jesus says like, you know, take the plank out your eye before you try to take the speck out your brother's eye. And something that I've been trying to do in my life is take the plank out of my eye and use that plank and build it on top of the foundation of Jesus, bro. And that's the thing that I've been trying to do is like, man, like every time I can like, let me catch myself and humble myself before I look at somebody else's foundation and be like, oh, like I can see that's about to fall. Like, you no, know, let me look at my foundation and take the stuff that I'm doing in my life and take that plank out and start using that, put that on top of the foundation of Jesus, bro. That's huge, great point, because I think of how I, I, I get to help people that, who have had experiences that I've had, who have made dumb choices I have made. And I tell them, don't, don't make these dumb choices because of these consequences. And I don't tell them that. I tell them that because I've made those choices. I've had that plank in my eye. I'm seeing a dust up in yours. It's like, you don't want this, this in plank. And it's, just, it's, it's the same thing. I'm taking that plank on my own eye, building it to help someone else. Mm -hmm. Huge. And it's tough because oftentimes we can't even feel the plank in our eyes, man. Mm. We think that our vision is precise and crystal clear, when in reality, there's something that is visibly impairing us. And so for us, it's important, like driving that point home again. Let, let's just take the, the, plank, the plank out first. Take the plank out, that way you can adjust your eyes. You ever like, you ever went to the eye doctor and they, like, they dilate your eyes or whatever, and then you go out and they, it takes a couple of minutes for your eyes to regain the full sight. I think once we take off that plane, we have to first let our eyes readjust to the actual life so that we can actually see clearly and then take the next step forward, right? Mm -hmm. So for you, you talked about taking out the plane to help build other planks, right? But in order for you to know where you have to build next, you got to take out the plane and then let your eyes readjust and see, right. oh, this is where I went wrong in the past. Mm -hmm. Here's where I should do that can actually improve the foundation that I'm building. And I think at the end of the day, we all want a sturdy foundation and it, it starts with Christ. And I think if you start there, then the opportunities for you to grow as an individual will come, soon come after you take the plank out of your own eye and recognize, like, hey, I don't have all the answers. I'm not gonna do this life on my own. And my foundation that I'm building right now, it's, it's ruptured. And, and that was the case for me, like, three years ago. I mean, the things that I was building up inevitably were the things that actually destroyed me. Mm -hmm. But once I humbled myself and actually acknowledged Christ, like, hey, I need you in my life. Like, what I'm building right now is leaving me empty and unsatisfied and unfulfilled. But with you, I know that things can change from you. So I'm willing to see your goodness and your faithfulness carried out. And today I'm a living testament to see that God has actually been faithful and providing a foundation for me in my life. Yeah, man. I wanted to ask y'all another question is just like, what are some of the things you guys have seen in your own life when you, when you like the consequences of building on that foundation of sand? Mm. Oh man. Do you you don't want to have everybody out, man. Can't, <laughs> can't, can't be on here looking like we got it all together. Nah, man. dog. I'm only helping other people out because I made a lot of dumb choices. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget. It's real. But yeah. I've been thinking on this thought a lot where all the decisions that I make, when I'm building a foundation on me, 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 I feel empty, okay? <laughs> but when I'm building a foundation on Christ, I feel, full, I feel full, I feel filled up. And that's why I'm saying I'm doing 11 out of 10, because I'm not really focused up on me. I focus on everybody around me. I'm focused on how I can serve, not what I can get, but what I can give. I found this way of life just so freeing, so open, so, so caring. Like, I'm waking up just fantastic. Not because I'm doing good. I got problems, bro. I, but it's because of what God's doing in my life and how I'm, I'm helping other people. I truly think that we are not made as humans to get the get the love and all the likes ourselves, but rather to show other people the, the love and the like of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it's all about. And so again, every time I make it about me, I feel empty. But every time I make it about God, man, I feel full. I'm here to serve. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, it's funny because I just talked about this the other day with uh, some, some guys on campus. But a guy asked me the question, he says, what is the most difficult thing that you've ever been doing in your life? Mm. And I was like, shoot. I had to travel back in time to the time where I built my foundation on lust after woman, uh, pursuit, the pursuit of money and the pursuit of play, all three of those things. Like for what, 19 or so years, that was what I was building. And 
it didn't help that my surroundings were encouraging those things. So I didn't know any better because I thought I was trying to be like the people who I admired in my eyes back then. And so like the fruit of that was I, I built this character and this reputation that was compromised because I was only thinking about myself, that me, 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 me. But what that led to is just destroying the bonds that I had, the relationships that I had, and overall, my overall character. And so that's why like, it burdens me today because I got built a foundation that I thought was firm, but it was rocky and it just collapsed. And then it left me in a place where I was empty, I was dry, I was feeling like unmotivated, like depressed, all of these things, man. And it was funny because in the, in the moment of those things, while pursuing those things, it feels good, like the, the temporary gratification. But we know that Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians, like to fix your eyes on the things that are unseen, because those things are everlasting. Every single thing that I fixed on, whether it was lust, whether it was money, or whether it was just adulation from others, all of those things were temporal, and it got me nowhere, nowhere quickly, actually, at that. Um, so after I essentially destroyed my entire life, the humility to acknowledge that I can't continue to build this life is what changed my life. And I think Christ came in as an eternal great carpenter that he is, and he started patching things up, man. But mm -hmm. when I built my life on that foundation of greed and lust and women, man, it's just, it just compromised instantly. Bro. Yeah, that's good. I think for me, bro, when I was building my life on just like, just that sand foundation, man, I caught myself in cycles, bro. Mm -hmm. I caught myself in cycles of emptiness, you know, loneliness, yep. like depression as well. And I think even relationships too, it was a lot of me like starting over, starting over, starting over, but I kept starting over trying to build it on that sand foundation. So whenever adversity would hit, it would just be like, ah, gotta start over again, gotta start over again. And me, I'm a person like, sometimes I just hate starting over, especially <laughs> like when I'm doing the same things and it's not working, like I, I hate like starting over. And like, I think like the, like the definition of insanity, bro, is like doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And so that's the thing, when I was doing that, I was insane, bro. I'm over here trying to do the same thing, do the same thing to expect a different result. And I think, like, I heard an analogy, it's like, you know, some people try to read, a, read the same book over and over again, but expect a different outcome. And that's the thing that I was doing. But specifically, it was like, man, like, I'm over here, I'm building this, fun, building this relationship on lust, I'm building this relationship on, on greed, on pride and stuff. And it's like, okay, well, now I got to start over again because this one just came crashing down because of adversity. Then I do it again and do it again and do it again. And it's like, it left me empty ultimately. Yeah. And it left me lonely ultimately. But then, like you said, like Jesus by his grace, like came and was like, hey, like this is the foundation you need to be building. And I was like, oh, okay, like I'm going to use that one, bro. And so when that adversity came, it was like, oh, but you got Jesus to lean on because that adversity never moved. Maybe the bricks moved a little bit, but the, but the foundation was always there. It's good because you mentioned that word like cycles and I think like life is filled with different cycles, whether it's just continuous broken cycles or, or, or good cycles that you start to implement in your life that can help benefit you. And I really want to focus on like the broken cycles that we all, you know, suffer and endure for the majority of our lives. And it's hard because sometimes people don't even recognize that they're directly, you know, the product of broken cycles from the past. And we know that we live inside of a broken world. And so broken cycles are passed down from generation to generation and then people live in that. But I think what's beautiful about God is that he actually takes us through a new cycle. If you think of a washing machine, there's a wash cycle that you put in. And once you like accept God in your life, he makes you brand new. And so if you look at the, the illustration of a washing machine, you put dirty clothes in. And so they're, they're filthy, like they're absolutely disgusting. And but you put that cycle on it for however long that period takes and become washed and then you dry it and it's a brand new, like they're sweet clean. And that's the same thing that happens with Christ when we accept him into our lives. He takes us through this washing side where he's removing the things that we've built our foundation on, whether that's greed, lust, pride, selfish, selfish ambition, dishonest gain, all these things. And he strips us away and he washes you with his cleanliness and his purification through his blood and his sacrifice. Mm -hmm. and then he makes you brand new. Like it says that in Second Corinthians 5, like we are made brand new, like the old is gone and the new is here. And I think that's just the most beautiful thing is just like if you're struggling with repeating the same cycles over and over again. Take take inventory and analyze, okay, where am I going? I'm going through the same thing over again, and shoot, I'm still dirty. And is this where I want to be? Because at the end of the day, I think people don't ask enough questions to ask, like, where do I actually want to be in life? It's, I talked to a couple of people, like, last week, like, as we enter in college, and I was like, like, like what are your goals? And what do you, you want to do in life? And you don't have to have all the answers figured out right now, but some people don't have it in the direction where they even want to go. And that, that just pains me because it's like, well, then you're just stagnant and you're just standing in one place. Now, if you have a direction of where you want to go to now, it's things starting to become clear. But if you're continuous in the cycle of, I'm going to try this and it doesn't work, I'm going to try that, it doesn't work, then, then you just end up in a position where 
you're looking in the wrong places for the outcomes that only God can give you, man. So, and that's just, that's just some encouragement that I want to give, man. Like God is the one who, who purifies us. He washes us, especially in our moral filth, our disgustingness, and he makes us clean, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just say that Christ, he is the soap that makes us clean. And so you can keep having something rinsed with water and maybe it's going to change, it's going to get wet, it's going to get dry, but they're really going to get clean. Mm -hmm. So I would say that Christ, he is the soap that gets us clean. Clean. So if you want to get clean, if you want to change, bring in Christ. Yeah, I think um, it's just like we should all leave a legacy of having a foundation built on Christ, you know. And I think like the Bible says, like train up a child in the way they should go and they will not depart from it, you know. And so that's the type of legacy we should be leaving to some of us. We, like we have kids, hey, you should be living a life in the future to where it's like you're building your life on the foundation. And I think that the choices that we make shows the legacy that we're trying to leave. So if it's like, man, like if I'm making bad choices, if I'm dealing with sin and I'm over here trying to leave a legacy, now I'm leaving a legacy of sin for the next person. So it's so important for us to, you know, just to be a, the right example for other people as well. Because this life is not for us. Like Jesus came to serve and it's the same thing for us. If he's the blueprint, we should be here to serve too. Yeah. So just make sure like we need to be like building a legacy on building a foundation on Christ. Now, practically speaking, you talked about struggling with what you struggled with in the past, whether it was, you know, looking for pleasure, right? My question to you is, you talked about foundation. Where do you start? Like, where for the person who doesn't know and they've been going through the continuous cycles over and over again, yeah. where do they start? What did, you, where did you start with and how did you end up where you are today with the legacy that you're creating right now? Man, I think well, I can only speak from experience, man. I would first thing I would say is reflection, bro. Mm. It's first thing you want to reflect and then you want to acknowledge what you're doing is wrong. And then also after that, I would say confession as well. It's like me. I had nights where I was literally crying and telling God, like, God, like, this is what I've been doing. I know I've been doing wrong. And just like leaving that all at his feet and giving it to him, you know. So that's where I would say you definitely want to start is just by sitting back, reflecting, looking at your life and acknowledging, OK, like, Am I really building a foundation on, a, am I really building on top of a strong foundation or building on top of a sandy or like a sand foundation? And so I think it's just about sitting back, reflecting, acknowledging, and then confessing to the Lord, like, hey, Lord, like, this is what I've been doing and I see what I've been doing is wrong. And they want, and I want to change because I think you can acknowledge that you're doing wrong, but if you don't take the steps to actually want to change, then it's not going to happen. So actually like acknowledge and then actually see like, hey, I actually want to be better and find the steps that, you know, that can take you to in that direction, bro. That's good, bro. You got any steps practical? I mean, I think he, I think he was uh, spot on. You have to reflect and then see what's, what's missing, what is wrong here, and then you gotta fix that. And I think that for almost every problem, the way to fix that is with adding in God, because I think that we all have a uh, God-shaped hole up in our heart. I think that we try and fill it with so many different things, you know, me personally, with girls with the money acceptance and it really didn't work i got all those things but i always still felt empty up at the end and i filled that hole with god ain't never felt better since <laughs> hey, flat, flat, i'm good bro <laughs> just here sir smoking, bro. <laughs> just here sir <laughs> yeah, bro. well man it's a solid episode man appreciate yeah. you guys man dropping the wisdom hey foundation build it on christ amen we catch y'all we out here Peace. Peace.